Arno C. Gabeline. By the time James H. Brooks died in 1897, most of the original founders of the Niagara Bible Conference had either died or left the conference. The reason given by those who left was consistently the same. They had changed their views on the any-moment pre-tribulation rapture of the saints. Men like Robert Cameron, Nathaniel West, W.J. Erdman, and others simply found they could not go on believing a doctrine for which they found no evidence in Scripture. However, their departure merely left room at the top for an energetic new leader to assume command. And I have to admit, Satan's new fool hit the ground running. Immediately after the Niagara Bible Conference disbanded, Arno C. Gabeline announced he was planning to begin a new conference, the Seacliff Bible Conference, the following year. But in his publication, Our Hope, he made it clear he would not allow anyone to speak at the conference if they did not believe the doctrine of the any-moment pre-tribulation rapture of the saints. Gabeline had thrown down the gauntlet. Dispensational leaders who did not believe Darby's any-moment rapture tried to form a separate conference and failed. By contrast, Gabeline's Seacliff Bible Conference was not only successful, it continued on for several years, enticing a multitude of unsuspecting Christian leaders into believing Darby's dumb doctrines. It is not difficult to see why Gabeline was absolutely adamant regarding the any-moment rapture of the saints. He was, for all intents and purposes, a member of the Plymouth Brethren. After immigrating from Germany in 1879, Gabeline had become a Methodist minister. For several years, he enjoyed a good measure of success evangelizing among the Jews in New York City. However, after three Brethren businessmen, a Mr. Ball, a Mr. Fitch, and a Mr. Peary, introduced Gabeline to what Darby and his followers taught concerning the future of the Jews, the Jews found his Christian message much more acceptable. They still do, as a matter of fact. The Jews, after all, have been expecting the Messiah that Darby preached for nearly 2,000 years. After becoming a dispensationalist, however, Gabeline left the Methodist denomination and dedicated himself to spreading brethren doctrine throughout the entire church. He was the perfect man for Satan's plan. Although ostensibly a Methodist, he was actually a covert brethren. You can get a feel for his mindset from the way he talks about them. Through these brethren beloved, I had become acquainted with the work of those able and godly men who were used in the great spiritual movement of brethren in the early part of the 19th century, John Nelson Darby and others. I found in his writings, in the works of William Kelly, Mackintosh, F. W. Grant, Bellet, and others, the sole food I needed. I esteem these men next to the apostles in their sound and spiritual teaching. Understand what I'm saying. Dispensationalism today retains the same goofy any-moment rapture doctrine that Satan conveyed to Darby because Arno C. Gabeline refused to have anything to do with dispensationalists who did not believe it. It is interesting to note that Gabeline's rejection of those who disagreed with him is extremely reminiscent of how Darby reacted when Newman disputed the same belief. In both cases, Satan was absolutely insistent that the doctrine had to be maintained. It is not surprising that he fought so ferociously for it. He knows the lie concerning the pre-tribulation rapture is one doctrine he absolutely must have if he is ever to pull off his deception. Yet there is much more to dispensationalism than its any-moment pre-tribulational rapture of the saints and the distinction it makes between Israel, the Jews, and the church. To discover what Satan's essential doctrines are, however, one need only read the Schofield Reference Bible.